Amen. Let's look at verse 15. Minister Vivian Anderson led us in the reading and the hearing of the contextual environment of the text. Let's zero in on the text. Verse 15. Begin reading aloud with me. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Somebody give God praise, Deb, as you go to your seats in the presence of the Lord. In keeping with the uh, series that I've been in on focus, the power of one thing. Ricky, I want to talk today about one decision. One decision. I, I mentioned, uh, beloved, on this past Wednesday night uh, when preaching at Tridestone. And let me thank each of you, uh, so many of you came out on Wednesday night, our music ministry and others of you who came out, those of you who prayed, let me express my appreciation to you for that. But I mentioned on Wednesday night at Tridestone that the Monday, two days before that evening, uh, our nation observed for the second year, for the second time, uh, a new federal holiday uh, that is known as Juneteenth. And uh, Juneteenth, uh, many of you know, amen, you can applaud for that, uh, amen. Uh, Juneteenth, as many of you know, is also known as Freedom Day. Uh, and the historical event uh, that centers around Juneteenth uh, marks the day some two years after. Now, I want you to hear what I'm saying. Some two years after the signing of the Emancipation the, a Proclamation that slaves in Texas learned that they had already been set free. Now, now, there's so much, Larry, about this particular event that boggles my mind. A and much of that whole experience of slavery that defies logic. And among them is the fact that in many cases and for many years, I'm talking post-emancipation proclamation, for many years and for many people, years after Abraham Lincoln signed that document, many of them were not free at all. In fact, history records uh, that many quote-unquote ex-slaves stayed on quote-unquote in the employ of their former masters. And many of them were often not paid, and many of them even involved in what we now call sharecropping were often treated unfairly and inhumane. Coupled with that is the sad reality that having been legally politically set free, many slaves had no options. And many did not know what to do with this newfound status and freedom. And as a result of that, many of them stayed on where they were, having become accustomed to their lifestyle and not able to handle the psychological and sociological demands of freedom. Beloved, Here's my premise. I know y'all saying, I ain't come here for no history lesson. Here, here's, my, here's my premise. Freedom is not always easy. Try that one more time. I'll try that one more time. Freedom is not always easy, and freedom does not come without a price. We see that, Sister Kelly, in the story of Israel. 
as they come out of Egypt. And, and what we discover, my Mary, when you read the opening pages of the book of Exodus, the sojourn, the pilgrimage of God's people out of Egyptian bondage, out of slavery, into a place of freedom, we notice at the very first sign of struggle, those Israelites who prayed for freedom turned to Moses and said, we would have been better staying in Egypt. Y'all not helping me. Sometimes we pray for stuff but don't realize the burden, the onus, the responsibility that goes along with it. First sign of struggle, first sign of problem, first challenge came their way. The ancient Israelites said to Moses, you should have left us where we were. At least we had onions and garlic and leeks. At least we knew where we were going to sleep at night. They realized Sometimes you get tempted to go back to Egypt if only in your heart. But beloved, we don't just see that in the history of Israel. We see it in our own history as well. It is said that Harriet Tubman often remarked, speaking of her trips on the Underground Railroad, uh, she said, I could have freed more if I could have convinced them that they were slaves. <laughs> Part of the burden of freedom is that we have responsibilities. And one of them is the responsibilities of choices. Some of us, I know not many of you, but some of us, me included, have had people in our families who, how shall I say it, um, were guests of the government. <laughs> Somebody say translate that. Uh, they spent time in prison. And, 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 and some of us, Todd, some of us uh, had friends, had cousins who spent so much time in prison that when they got out of prison, they didn't know how to act no longer in prison. Because they, come on, stay with me, they had become accustomed to being told when to go to bed, when to wake up, when to eat, when to exercise. Their lives were mapped out for them. But once they were put out on the street, they did not have someone, a corrections officer, saying get up, go to the shower, go to the mess hall, go out in the yard. Here, here it is. Now that they are free, they have the responsibility of making choices. Freedom ain't always easy, y'all. And sometimes one of the hardest things about freedom is the freedom to make choices. Fact, in fact, you'd be surprised that Almighty God did not make us puppets, robots, machines, automatons. He made us with free will and volition. God help me here. God made us with the freedom of choice to make decisions. And even though he is God, see now this is where some of y'all aren't going to like me, even though he's God, he does not make decisions for us. He leaves to us the freedom to make our own decisions. Whole lot of folk, whole lot of folk running around here right now, afraid to make, I, I'm waiting on God. While you're waiting on God, God's waiting on you. As uh, soon, soon, soon as the Lord tell me what to do, God says, no, I didn't make you a robot. I didn't make you a puppet. I made you a man, a woman, an intellectual being with free will and volition. You have the right to choose. You have, are you ready for this? 
the options of decisions. Now let me say this real quick and I'll move on. That's a blessing, but it's also a burden. It's a, gr a gift, but it also has a share of grief. Okay, let me tell you what I mean. How many of you will admit with me, having freedom of choice, the right to make a decision, blessing, but it's a burden. Here's why. How many of us made choices looking back, we wish we hadn't made that choice? How many of y'all in second church will say, I made the decision, but in hindsight, it was the wrong decision? Freedom is costly, and it comes, Deacon Gary Croft, with the onus and the responsibility and the burden of choices and decisions. Nowhere is that better seen than in our text for today, where Joshua, in the last chapter of the book that bears his name, is getting ready for his ultimate departure. He gathers all of Israel at a place called Shechem, and he gathers there to give them his final charge as their leader. We'll unpack that in a moment. But it boils down to one thing. Are you ready? Today, you must make a decision. Choose you this day <laughs> whom you will serve. I'm going to say it in case y'all go to sleep. You'll at least get my premise for the whole message. And every one of us has the same decision. Who we will serve, who we will obey, whom we will worship, and whom we will follow. And God does not make us serve him. It's our choice. It is our decision. Let's unpack it. Are you ready? Here's the first thing. Notice with me, because in the text, there are three movements. There's the argument. Verses 1 through 13, Joshua lays out the history of the nation of Israel, all God has done for them. Then there's the appeal, verse 14, he says to them, serve the Lord. And then there's the alternative, verse 15, or if you don't want to serve the Lord, then serve the other gods who are really no gods at all. So here's the question. How do I make that decision? I'm glad you asked. Here's the first one. If you're going to make a decision, you got one decision. Now, now, I didn't tell you this, so let me tell you now. This isn't like what the decision, what you're going to wear. <laughs> you know, yeah, well, I, I don't know. What should I wear? And, and, and I'm going to say this, please, and you know I love you, right? So, some of y'all spend more time making that decision. Send me some love. I felt hostility in that section over there. Now, so, some of y'all take more time with that decision than you do with the ultimate decisions of your life. What am I going to eat after some of y'all been sitting here the whole time I've been preaching? What, where am I going to go eat at? What am I going to have? Now, now, nothing wrong with that. That's a good question. But that's not life's ultimate decision. Oh, God, I'm coming for you. In fact, who you marry is not life's ultimate decision. Where you go to school, where you work, where you, those are all important, but they are not the ultimate decisions of life. The ultimate decision of life, one decision, is what are you going to do with God? Ooh. That's what Moses has told them, and now Joshua comes to tell them again. So how do I decide? I'm glad you asked. Here's the first one. First question, if I'm going to make a decision, I'm going to make this choice, one choice, one decision, and I've got to make it, how do I determine what God I should serve? How do I make that decision? Well, first thing you got to ask, is it a rational choice? Is it a rational decision? And here's what I mean by that. One of the charges leveled against the church, and especially 
against the black church is that we're too emotional. Come on, y'all getting quiet. No, you know, I, 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 I don't go to that church because they, they so emotional over there. Now, 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 we don't say that during football season. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. We, you know, we, we, we don't say that du during the playoffs for the NBA. We, we don't say that uh, in February or March, whenever they decide to have the Super Bowl. Uh, we get all excited about stuff that does not matter. But then when it comes to our relationship with God, we want to charge folk with being too emotional. <laughs> One of the charges leveled against us is we're too emotional. Or that, that religion is a right brain experience. More feelings and intuition and emotions than thought and intellect. So let me argue with you today for all you deep folk. Uh, that this decision doesn't have to be emotional. It can be cognitive. It can be rational. It, it can make sense. Here it is. The question you have to ask is this. If I'm going to choose a God, are there legitimate reasons he should be my God? Oh, Jesus, have mercy. I, I mean, I mean if, if, if I must choose a God, are, are there legitimate reasons that I should choose this God? That's what Joshua lays out in the whole chapter. The reasons they should choose him. And, and I'm going to say this, uh, I think, the reasons for choosing Yahweh outnumber the reasons for choosing some small G God who is no God at all. First one, are there legitimate reasons for choosing God? Here's B, is there a legitimate record of this God? Oh, God, I feel like preaching that. Oh, if I'm going to make a rational decision, Deacon Skelton, I got to ask myself, now, are there any legitimate reasons for choosing this God as opposed to that God? And if there is, watch this. Is there a track record that this God has that other gods don't have? Now, if I preach it, don't y'all take it from me. How many of you can testify God's track record in your life is undeniable? <laughs> oh, God, I feel that right there. Just, just tell a neighbor, he has a good record. Wakes me up every morning, puts food on my table, clothes on my back makes ways out of no way. I need somebody to holler. He has a record. I'm, I'm talking rational, y'all. This ain't emotional. Take it to the lab. All their reasons. Is there a record? Here, see. Are there any legitimate results from serving this God as opposed to some other guy. And now I need to put some saints on the witness stand so y'all can testify on behalf of God and the result of serving him in your own life. And all you got to do is look back over your life, see what it was like before you gave your life to him, what it's like now, and I think you could shout with me that serving the Lord pays off and every day with Jesus is sweeter <laughs> than the day before. Oh yeah, there, there, there are some results that are cruel to my life because he's in my life. 
Amen, amen. In fact, you ought to tell the person sitting next to you, if it wasn't for God, you wouldn't want to sit next to me. You wouldn't want to run them into me in a dark alley. I know you're looking at me all dressed up, but if you knew like I knew what I was like before he changed my life, what a wonderful change. Hey, Kev, I, I got to preach it. In my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. It's rational, y'all. It's rational. All their legitimate reasons that I should serve him. He created me. He sustains me. He, he, he watches over me. Those are reasons. Is there a record? He's been good to me all of my life. Are there results? Yes. Because he's made a change in my life. So, for, first thing, I'll make a decision. Choose you this day whom you will serve. First of all, it has to be a rational. Let the whole church say rational. Here's the next one. Ask yourself, is it a reliable choice? Not just, not just a rational choice. Um, you know, Joshua lays it out, case for God to Israel. God has done this and God has done that and God has done the other. And, and, and he said, it just makes sense for you to follow God. But it's not just rational. Thelma, watch this. Is it a reliable choice? Now, now here's what I mean. Here's what I mean. In a pinch, <laughs> see y'all, y'all always taking my sermon from me. In a pinch, will the one or the thing you choose to be your God show up? I mean, I mean, you get to choose. He will not force you to choose him. But if I were you, I'd sit down and I'd do the, I would just go ahead, do the analysis. Is it rational? Is this a reliable choice? Here it is, when I need him. Will he show up? <laughs> God help me here. Because the last thing you want is to need your God and he not show up. Last thing you need is to cry out to him and he not hear you and not answer you. So while you sitting here deciding, some of our young people, you know, you went off, got one semester of school. One quarter, you done read four chapters in some book. <laughs> now all of a sudden, you I don't know. Uh, my, my, I don't think I'm going to church today. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I don't know. I, I didn't want to tell you, but I'm not sure. I still believe in God. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, okay, I got you. I feel you. I feel you. I feel. You. I know you smart now. My only argument with you is, if you're going to choose against God for something else, ask yourself, how reliable is the something else I'm choosing? Okay, here it is. If I put all my weight on it, will it collapse under the weight of my weight, or can it hold me up? If, if, if I come to it in the midnight hour with a question and with a burden, can it comfort me or does it leave me as empty as when I started? Is it, is it reliable? Because the last thing you want is a God who when you need him is not reliable. You, you, you remember the story, don't you, of the battle on Mount Carmel? between Elijah and the prophets of Baal. 
even on Mount Carmel, Elijah called the people to a choice, a decision. How long will you halt between two opinions? If Baal is Baal, follow him. If God is God, follow him. But for God's sake, make a choice. So, so Elijah says, we, we're going we're to have a little test up here. I love the Bible. We're going to have a little test up here. Say, that, say well, here's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to offer a sacrifice. And whatever God answers by fire, we're going to let that God be God. And, and, and then what, what, watch this. Hey, Zell, watch this, watch this. He said, and to show you how, y'all got time for this? How magnanimous I am. <laughs> I'm going to let you go first. So he pulls up a lawn chair, sits up under a tree, watches the prophets of Baal go at it. I mean, they start about 8 in the morning, hollering and screaming, incantations and calling on Baal. Baal don't answer. And, you know, and then you know how the saints can get sometimes. You know, we get a little devilish. Cry louder. Maybe he's on vacation. <laughs> Maybe he's sleeping. Bible says they start cutting themselves. They're bleeding and Baal is silent. Finally, Elijah said, y'all about through. He said, now here's what we're going to do. You've had your chance. He said, now it's our turn. He said, now move that stuff. He said, I want you to dig a pit around it. I want you to bring some water. I want you to fill it with water. I want you to pour water on the sacrifice. And then I want you to step back. <laughs> and he said, now I took y'all hours and ain't nothing happened. He said, watch this. He said, Father, <laughs> I need you to show them that you are God. And the Bible says that God rained down fire, lapped up the water, burned up the sacrifice because when you have a God that's reliable, he not only shows up, he'll show out. Okay, I'm through. <laughs> God, I feel like preaching this. Would you tell a neighbor, say, neighbor, he didn't have to do all of that. But every now and then, God wants to show you beyond the shadow of a doubt that I am God all by myself. Uh, uh, somebody holler, he's reliable. He's reliable. He's reliable. He'll, he'll do exceeding. Abundantly, above and beyond. So, so for someone who's who's wrestling today, maybe online, but Lewis Price, uh, maybe online, Ty Sarah, Gen C, Elder Kathy Lockhart, I didn't forget y'all. All my online folks, Sister Wynette, maybe Erica. You're in the valley of indecision about God. We're coming up on graduates weekend. Once again, as we do every year, we're going to release our children to schools and academies and halls of higher education. They'll leave us to go to places beyond Ohio. Some will stay here in Ohio, but we'll release them to influences they've never known before. It may be you're trying to Figure out, do you still believe in the God of your mama and your daddy and your grandpa? And all I'm trying to tell you, you got to make the choice. Pastor can't make it for you. Mommy can't make it for you. PG can't make it for you. Choose you this day. But watch this. It ought to be a rational choice. And my God, it ought to be a reliable choice. So if you're going to make a real, I could preach this on graduate Sunday, but I, I just thought I'd preach it today for somebody who's not graduating, but you're wrestling. You already graduated, you're just wrestling. You, 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 you're torn, you don't know. You don't want to disrespect your mom and your dad. You don't want to disrespect me, but you've been reading books. And you've been, you've been watching stuff on YouTube. You're trying to figure out if, 
you know, you belong to one of the lost tribes of Africa. If you want to be Rosvaterian and a five percenter, you're, you're, you're wondering. And I just thought I'd come and tell you, you got to make a decision, baby. Your life depends on it. But you got to make the right one. And you don't do it because pastor said it. You do it because it's a rational choice. It's a rational decision. It's, it's a decision based on whether or not this God you're about to trust your life with is reliable. So let me give you three questions you got to ask. Here's the first one. Is there proof? I mean, um, it, do you have any preponderance of evidence? <laughs> Is there any proof? Is there any proof? Beyond what you saw on YouTube. What proof do you have for the validity, the veracity, the verity of this God you're about to give your life to? What proof? We have proof. Oh, no. Oh, no. The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament shows forth his handiwork. You and I are proof of his creation. We did not descend from monkeys. We are not the result of some cosmic you know, collision where we came. Some molecules came together and exploded and out we popped. No, it was God who stood there and made us in his image after his likeness and breathed into us the ruach, the breath of life. And we became a living soul. We have proof. You got to ask, is there any proof? Is there any proof? Here's the next word. Is there any performance? What has this other God done? No, really. What has he done? Bring me the stuff. Show me one thing. A world he made. Show, show me. Show me a galaxy he created. A star he formed. Show me a plant that he and his creativity originated. What performance are you basing your decision on? What proof do you have? What performance? Here's C. I know y'all saying, boy, he's pretty. He's doing, you know, a lot of arguing up there. Here's my next one. What power has he displayed? I mean, I mean, why would you serve a cap gun God when you got a God with atomic power? <laughs> what, what, Lee, what power has the God you flirting with displayed? Where's the proof? Where's the performance? Where's the power? If you don't have any of that, I would suggest to you, you might want to stay where you are. In the words of my grandma, you might want to dance with the one who brung you. You might want to stay with the God who has gotten you as far as you are now because at least you have some proof of what he can do. Well, well, here's the third thing. Here's the third thing. We must ask, not only is it rational, not only is it reliable, but is it a rewarding choice? Kevin, here's what I mean by that. Is it a choice that later on in life I will regret? Wow. I cannot imagine, and I say this in love, I cannot imagine what it would be like at 75, 80 years old to be on my bed of affliction looking towards death and realize I gave my life to the wrong thing. 
And in the words of the old folk, facing chilly Jordan, I wish I had chosen otherwise. I want to ask you today as I close, if, if you choose the God you're flirting with, I know right now it's popular, right now it's the in vogue thing, all your friends are doing it, you know, new age religion, I, I got you, I know, I know. Right now you think you being, you know, whatever you being. I want you to look down the road. When I'm gone, I'll be gone a long time. You, and and when, I'm, when my bones are bleaching in the dust, and 60 years from now, 40 years from now, you come to press a dying pillow, will you regret your decision? I want to say this and I'm going to close. I've watched too many saints crossing over. <laughs> and I promise you not one of them ever regret it. They made Jesus their choice. <laughs> I wish I had help up in here on a Sunday morning. Can, can, can I get a witness from some living saints right now that I have no regrets that I gave my life to Christ. I have no regrets that I made Jesus my choice. I have no regret that I turned my life over to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I wish I had somebody could jump up and testify for him and say, I'm not sorry. My only regret is I didn't do it sooner. Oh, God, help me here. Would you turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I wish I had done it earlier. I wish I had done it sooner. I wish I had done it when I was younger. It pays to serve Jesus. It pays every day. It pays every step of the way. Though the pathway to glory may sometimes be drear, you'll still be happy every step of the way. Somebody hollering, no regrets. No, somebody hollering, no regrets. Hey, Mike, Mike, come in, come in, come in, come in. You messing up my sermon, Mike. Coming up here planting that seed. Y'all know Mike, right? That's with Mother Edwards, that's Deacon Edwards' son. Mike's a good man. He's crying already, I ain't got to the story. How long were you in jail, Mike? Six years. Six years in jail. Godly mother, loved him, prayed for him, spent six years in jail. But he got saved. Come on. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Found Jesus. Gave his life to the Lord. He had choices. In prison for six years. A lot of folk came in there with a lot of religions. A lot of folk representing the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. A lot of folk representing other religions. But he decided, I'm going to go with the one that my mama told me about. I'm going with the one I learned to pray to when I was a child. I'm going with the one who brought me this far by faith. And today he's in church. How long have you been out, Mike? Eight years. Been out eight years serving the Lord, loves the Lord, living for the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, just before I rest my case, exhibit A of why you ought to choose the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Exhibit A of why you ought to go with Yahweh, with Elohim. Why you want to go with Jehovah, Sitka New, Rafa, Raya, Rofe? That's why you want to make a choice for the God of your salvation. Choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Do I have anybody in First Church today who can say, I'm going with Mike, I'm serving the Lord, I'm giving my life to Christ because he has made me some promises. I'll never leave you, 
I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you always. I go to prepare a place for you. And when I get it ready, I'm coming back to receive you. And in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed from mortal to immortality. On that great getting up morning, is there anybody here can shout with me when we all get to heaven? What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We're going to sing, shout, shout, sing, sing, shout, shout, sing. We're going to sing and shout. And my soul look back and wonder how I got over. I got three seconds left. Would you tell a neighbor, neighbor, if your child's in jail, if your grandchild's on drugs, if your grandchild's acting crazy like they lost their mind, remember Mike. If Mike can do it, your grandchild can do it. If God can save Mike, he can save your grandchild. He can, it doesn't matter how far they stray, how bad they fall, what a mess they made. He's able, I feel like preaching. He's able, pick you up, turn you around. Place your feet. I choose God. I choose God. I choose. Somebody holler, I choose God. Choose you. 